we're asked to evaluate the limit. We have the limit of the complex fraction as b approaches 2. Notice here if we try to perform direct substitution to determine the limit, we have 1 half minus 1 half, which is 0. In the numerator, in the denominator, we have 2 minus 2, which is also 0. This gives us the indeterminate form of 0 divided by 0, which indicates we cannot determine the limit by performing direct substitution, but that does not mean the limit does not exist. We can often perform algebraic techniques to change the form of the function we're trying to find the limit of so that we can then find the limit by performing direct substitution. In this case, the only thing we could possibly do to try to simplify the complex fraction would be to subtract the fractions in the numerator. And that's what we'll do. This actually falls into the case of case three where we find the least common denominator. So I'm gonna show two ways we can simplify this complex fraction in order to determine the limit by performing direct substitution. So let's go ahead and rewrite the complex fraction below. We have one divided by b minus one half divided by the quantity b minus two. So now we'll begin by subtracting these two fractions by obtaining the least common denominator, which is two b. So we'll multiply the fraction of one over b by two in the numerator and denominator. We'll multiply the fraction of one half by b in the numerator and denominator. And now we'll go ahead and subtract. Notice now we have a common denominator of 2b in the numerator. Subtracting, we have 2 minus b in the numerator. And now remember, a fraction bar represents division, so we can write this as 2 minus b all over 2b divided by b minus 2, or if we want b minus 2 over 1. Now we'll write this as a product. Dividing by b minus 2 is equivalent to multiplying by the reciprocal of 1 over b minus 2. So this gives us 2 minus b over 2b times 1 over the quantity b minus 2. And now if we look at 2 minus b and b minus 2, these two expressions are opposites. Notice for 2 minus b, the 2 is positive and the b is negative. And for b minus 2, the b is positive and the 2 is negative. So we're going to go ahead and factor out our negative 1 from 2 minus b. This will give us negative one times the quantity negative two plus b. And we can write negative two plus b as b minus two. So let's rewrite this as negative one times the quantity b minus two all over two b times one over the quantity b minus two. And now we can see the common factor of b minus two between the numerator and denominator. b minus two divided by itself simplifies to one the given complex fraction simplifies to negative one over two b, which means you can rewrite the original limit as the limit of negative one divided by two b as b approaches two. So I showed some extra work here. I also wanna show a shorter way by multiplying the numerator and denominator of the complex fraction by the LCD of two b. So again, I'll show this one other way, starting with the original expression again. Again, recognizing the LCD of the numerator is going to be 2b, we would multiply the numerator by 2b and the denominator by 2b and then simplify. In the numerator, one over b times 2b is two and then minus 2b times one half is b. This is still divided by, we're gonna leave the denominator in factored form as 2b times the quantity b minus two and again, from here, we will factor out negative one from the numerator, which gives us negative one times the quantity. We know from above, we're going to have negative two plus b in the parentheses, which we can write as b minus two. In this form, again, we can see we have a common factor of b minus two between the numerator and denominator. And of course, we get the same simplified expression of negative one over two b. Either method works for simplifying the complex fraction. The whole point is we can now find the limit by performing direct substitution since negative one divided by two b is continuous everywhere except at b equals zero and we're approaching b equals two. Evaluating the limit by performing direct substitution, we now have negative one divided by the product of two and two, which gives us negative one fourth for the limit. But let's also verify this limit graphically as well as using a table of values. Again, for the limit to exist, we must be approaching the same function value 
as we approach two from the right and the left, or from values less than two and greater than two. Looking at the table below, notice as we approach two from values less than two, we can see that the function values are approaching negative 0 0.25 or negative 1 fourth. And as we approach two from values greater than two, again we can see we are approaching the same function value of negative 0 0.25 or negative 1 fourth. And graphically, if we draw a vertical line at b equals two, which would be here, as we approach two from the left and from the right, we can see graphically we are approaching the same function value. It's a little hard to tell, but we are approaching the y value or function value of negative one fourth, which does verify the limit is negative one fourth. I hope you found this helpful.